Your goal by the end of the period today is to determine the theme of this poem, Four Skinny Trees by Sandra Cisneros. We're going to do that through performing a close reading of the poem. In this close reading, you will read the poem three different times, and you'll be looking for something different in each reading. In this video, I will read the poem with you three times. I will start each of the readings marking something different in the text, um, and then I'll ask you to finish it um, on your own. When I mark something in the text, I want for you to mark it as well, and then I'll let you finish each markup. Let's read it once together. Four Skinny Trees by Sandra Cisneros. Four skinny trees with skinny necks and pointy elbows like mine, four who do not belong here but are here, four raggedy excuses planted by the city. From our room we can hear them, but Nenny just sleeps and doesn't appreciate these things. Their strength is secret. They send ferocious roots beneath the ground. They grow up and they grow down and grab the earth between their hairy toes and bite the sky with violent teeth and never quit their anger. This is how they keep. Let one forget his reason for being. They'd all droop like a tulips in the glass. Each with their arms around the other. Keep, 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 trees say when I sleep. They teach. When I am too sad and too skinny to keep keeping. When I am a tiny thing against so many bricks. Then it is I look at at trees, when there is nothing left to look at on this street, four who grew despite concrete, four who reach and do not forget to reach, four whose only reason is to be and be. So in this first reading, I want to picture a little girl looking out her bedroom window at the four skinny trees, and I actually want you to imagine it. So we have our narrator, which is the speaker, um, is the little girl, and she's staring at these four trees um, who we find out are planted in concrete. Okay, so in this reading, we're going to mark um, anything that answers this question. How does she describe the trees? Um, we're going to write down everything that we know about these trees, and we're going to need to make some inferences as we go. So if we look at this first stanza, four skinny trees with skinny necks and pointy elbows like mine. So I immediately notice um, that they have skinny, uh, sorry, skinny trees, they have skinny necks, they have pointy elbows, okay? Um, I notice that they do not belong here, that they're raggedy. So one of the things that I want to mark, um, one of the inferences I can make about the trees at this point. Um, I notice that they're skinny, um, so maybe they're not as healthy as other trees. Um, I notice that they're raggedy, and that word raggedy to me, um, when I picture like a raggedy child or a raggedy doll, um, it's, it's got torn up clothes. Um, it's um, maybe uh, a little bit dirty. Um, one of the things that she says, which I'm, I'm not sure what to do with, but I want to mark it um, at this point, is that um, she says that they don't belong here. Um, so maybe they're not like they're not meant to be planted in that neighborhood, uh, or they're not like the other trees in that neighborhood. Um, okay, so if you haven't marked this yet, um, I encourage you to pause my video and mark what I've marked in the text. So let's move on to the second stanza. I'm going to move um, my picture out of the way, but I still want you to picture the little girl looking um, at the trees. Their strength is secret. Okay, so that's interesting. Their strength is secret. So they're strong, but it's a secret. They send ferocious roots, <laughs> that word, ferocious roots beneath the ground. They grow up and they go down. They grab the earth between their hairy toes, and they bite the sky with violent teeth and they never quit their anger. This is how they keep. Okay, so I notice right away the verbs, um, um, and they're like, they're like angry, violent verbs. 
So um, I know that she says that their strength is secret. So maybe they're, they're strong trees um, and they refuse. Um, like kind of like angrily refuse um, to be weak, to not be strong. Okay, I notice um, maybe they're not violent, but they're like holding, like when she says they bite the sky, like, and they um, they grab the earth, maybe they're like holding on um, to their strength. Okay, so um, I know we haven't finished that stanza, but I'm going to have you finish this um, second stanza um, and the third stanza on your own. Um, so pause the video at this point, um, finish marking up what I've marked up, um, and then mark anything else that you can notice about the trees or infer about the trees. Okay, so hopefully you have marked up, finished marking up your poem, um, noticing any details about the trees and making inferences. Um, in our second reading, we are going to make some inferences about the little girl. So we're going to notice any details um, that help us understand the little girl. So um, let's read the poem together once more, um, and then we'll start to notice details about the little girl. Four skinny trees with skinny necks and pointy elbows like mine. Four who do not belong here but are here. Four raggedy excuses planted by the city. From our room, we can hear them, but Nanny just sleeps and doesn't appreciate these things. Their strength is secret. They send ferocious roots beneath the ground. They grow up and they grow down. They grab the earth between their hairy toes and bite the sky with violent teeth and never quit their anger. This is how they keep. Let one forget his reason for being. They'd all droop like tulips in a glass, each with their arms around the other. Keep, 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 trees say, when I sleep they teach. When I'm too sad or too skinny to keep keeping, when I have a tiny thing against so many bricks, then it is I look at the trees. Sorry, then it is I look at trees. When there is nothing left to look at on this street. Four who grew despite concrete. Four who reach and do not forget to reach. Four whose only reason is to be and be. Okay, so in this first stanza, we know that she compares the trees to herself. She says that um, they have skinny necks and pointy elbows like mine. So we know that she also has skinny necks, um, a skinny neck and pointy elbows. Um, so I'm going to guess um, that she, um, like the trees, um, is skinny. Um, um, we notice that um, she, she talks about um, being able to see the trees out her window or hear the trees out her window. Um, and, and we notice that she talks about Nenny, right? Um, and Nenny, when, when Nenny sleeps, she doesn't hear the trees. Uh, so I'm going to add um, to this um, that um, she can hear the trees. And I'm guessing see the trees. So hear or see the trees out her window. And I'm guessing that Nanny um, maybe is a, a sibling or um or a family member, but Nenny doesn't appreciate the trees. Um, their strength is secret. They send ferocious roots beneath the ground. They grow up and they grow down. They grab the earth between their hairy toes and bite the sky with violent teeth and never quit their anger. This is how they keep. Um, so in this second stanza, I don't learn much about the little girl until, until this last line. Keep, 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 trees say, when I sleep, they teach. So one of the things I notice um, about the little girl is that um, the little girl hears the trees, and she hears them say, keep, 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 um, and they teach her a lesson. Okay, so if you haven't marked what I've marked so far, please take a moment to do that. And then pause the video, and I'm going to have you make... Um, mark any of your other inferences that you can make about the little girl in this third stanza. Okay, so hopefully you have marked all of your inferences about the trees, um, as well as all of your inferences about the little girl, our speaker. 
This third reading is where we're going to actually start to identify the theme. And the way we're going to do that in this um, poem is to look at what the trees teach the little girl. Because what they teach, that lesson that they teach the little girl, that's going to be our theme. So let's read it one more time. Four Skinny Trees by Sandra Cisneros. Four skinny trees with skinny necks and pointy elbows like mine. Four who do not belong here but are here. Four raggedy excuses planted by the city. From our room we can hear them. But Nenny just sleeps and doesn't appreciate these things. Their strength is secret. They send ferocious roots beneath the ground. They grow up and they grow down and they grab the earth between their hairy toes and bite the sky with violent teeth and never quit their anger. This is how they keep. Let one forget his reason for being. They'd all droop like tulips in a glass, each with their arms around the other. Keep, 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 trees say, when I sleep, they teach. When I'm too sad and too skinny to keep keeping, when I am a tiny thing against so many bricks, then it is I look at the trees. When there is nothing left to look at on the street, four who grew despite concrete, four who reach and do not forget to reach, four whose only reason is to be and be. So I want to look at what are the lessons that the trees could teach someone. Um, so one of the lessons that I think that they could teach someone we see in this second stanza um, when they talk about their strength and how um, how they are are violent and angry, how they how they bite and they grab, um, they are refusing, right? They're violently refusing um, not to be strong. So um, a lesson could be that um, they refuse to be um, weak. Sorry, did I say ref they refuse to be not strong? They refuse to be weak. Okay, um, no matter what their situation is, they will be strong. Okay, so that's one of the things I notice, um, a lesson that I think the trees are teaching the little girl in this second stanza. Another one that I see um, in the second stanza is to keep. And what I think maybe they mean um, when the trees teach her and when they whisper to her to keep, um, I, I think they're teaching her the lesson maybe there is, um, is to like continue um, pressing on or um, to continue fighting. Um, for for life or for happiness, it's the idea of like continuing, right? Keep, 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 keep. Um, so I'm gonna have you continue to mark what I've marked in the text so far. Um, your poem should be very, very marked up at this point. Pause the video. Um, you are going to identify any lessons that we see in this third stanza. Um, that the trees teach her. Um. The theme of this poem is outlined in the third stanza. So I would love for you to make sure that you notice what is like the big lesson that the trees are teaching her. That's going to be our theme today. Remember that a theme is a lesson or a big idea that the author is trying to teach us through the poem. Okay, continue your work with the poem and then get started on your discussion.